Adam alayhi salam to beg and to cry for 300 years. 300 years Adam alayhi salam stood on the mountain top of Mount in Sri Lanka. Mount in a serendip. 300 years he was begging and crying. He was crying, 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 crying continuously for 300 years. These days people don't even cry for the sake of Allah for three minutes, very rarely. 300 years he was continuing to cry. He was begging Allah for forgiveness and he was crying because he was separated. He was crying because he was separated from Allah. He was not crying because he was separated from his wife. He was not crying because he was separated from Jannah. He was separated because he knows that Allah is not happy with him. It's only after 300 years that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspired him to remember, to ask. To remember, to ask for what? Forgiveness for whose sake? For the Holy Prophet, they said to us, so that after 300 years, finally he remembered to say, I'm asking you for forgiveness for the sake of Muhammad. Saying, How do you know that one? He says, Because I remember when I woke up and I opened my eyes, the first thing I saw was the base of your throne and it was written, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. And that one must be very special that his name is mentioned next to your name. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. I'm asking forgiveness for that one. May Allah forgive him. Well, only after 300 years Allah inspired him. May Allah inspire him to ask forgiveness. Also in that, not that Allah cannot forgive, Allah can forgive. Any time. Not that Allah doesn't want to forgive. He can forgive. And showing us in reality our forgiveness is only on because of the sake of another one, not because of us. When we do something wrong, we deserve the justice is saying that we deserve to be punished. Earlier nations, they were not given intercession. Earlier nations, whatever wrong that they did, they have to be punished to clear the account, to get back to square one. They have to do it. They have to pay. You take something, you have to pay. It's not like Bayram is always saying how they can get out of it. They don't even think that way. To think that way is a very coward way of giving. It's not a man. We're not asking Allah to punish us, but the earlier nations, they do something wrong for them to come out from that wrong, for them to be equal, not for them to go to higher stations, for them to be back on track. They have to go through that punishment. When the nation of Musa, salam, he, they worship the golden calf. The punishment for that was those ones who worship. Allah is saying for those ones who did not worship the believers, the sin very carefully. Allah is saying to the believers, take your sword and slaughter the necks of those ones who did not believe, who strayed away from the belief, who worshipped the golden calf. The golden calf was not a it was alive, it was moving. It was moving, it was made from gold, it was moving, and it was attracting people's hearts. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent a very dark cloud covering it so that they cannot see who it is that they slaughter, otherwise their heart is going to change. Maybe that one is a father, a mother, a daughter, a son, uncle, your best friend. Covering, and they just they were cutting non stop. Non stop they were cutting. Until the sun rises, non-stop. 
So this uh, a big mercy now. Allah has shown it to this nation to use the name of that Prophet because only with the name of that Prophet, with only the name of the beloved one, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whatever, the, uh, the Jalal comes down. Don't argue. Don't say, why are you not forgiven? Don't say, you are supposed to no. Just say, for the sake of that one. That Allah, he may be even be willing to give up his rights. His right is commit something that the justice has to be given. Allah is one of the I'm not even going to ask for my right if you're asking sincerely for the sake of that one. So even then, at that time, that jealous one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we show him what is his most beloved to put us out from that divine look that is Jalal. Why do you think every time we say La ilaha illallah, we have to say salawat after that? Every time you say La ilaha illallah, you have to give salawat. Every time you say, reciting Allah's Jalal's names, you have to give salawat. Because the salawat is sharif, it is what is giving rahmat and the coolness and the balance and the softness to everything. Otherwise, we are in trouble. Just as Adam salam, he was. Now Allah is giving us a shortcut to that. So, try to give more rights to the Prophet. More rights to those whom he loves. Then, as Allah says, then you will find Allah most forgiving. Most forgiving. And that is pretty much the whole key. And Allah is not also keeping, this is the other thing, Allah is not keeping his beloved to himself. Huh? Yes, Allah is jealous one. But wherever here Allah is saying, you, Muhammad, you're only for me, not for anyone else. Isn't it something strange, something question to ask? Usually if we love something so much, we say, I only want it for myself, not for any others. But here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, if nobody loves him, I will not love him. It is the complete opposite. The more you love him, the more I will love you. Usually if we love something, we say, this is for me, Don't, no one even looks at it. But Allah is saying, the whole <coughs> creation of must look at that one, must love that one. There is something that there's endless secrets there too. About our own reality also. Inshallah. 